<laughs> hey. Uh, hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grill up stable. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. Thank you so much. And happy Wednesday to everybody here. Uh, right now, I am on location in the passenger seat of a car for legal purposes. Uh, but anyways, uh, we got a special guest uh, tonight. Uh, this guy uh, was a producer for my comedy specials, both of them. He was the director and writer of a film that I got to star in, so that was pretty awesome. But, man, this guy is a creative force to to reckon with, man. He uh, has his own comedy special out. Matt Onesti makes you uncomfortable. Please give it up for Matt Onesti, everybody. That is the kindest introduction I have ever gotten from someone sitting in the passenger seat in a car in a completely different country than America. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? It's fascinating right? how your podcast, how you managed to be in a different country where passenger seats are on the opposite side of where they normally are. But it's it's uh, fine. If we're all doing dangerous things. I figured that uh, for our 420 episode, I should uh, try and pack it up a little bit while we're There talking. you go. <laughs> yeah um but anyways no matt we're so happy to have you on here i'm choking uh but not for like like death or choking i was eating uh hamburgers like crazy right now because i've been eating all day because i'm excited for the show man because we're going to be talking about 420 uh because it, well it's not today it's in a few days but we know especially this is gonna be a bigger year to celebrate 420 because i mean while everything isn't yet set in place this is going to be Ohio's first year, knowing that we got some legal shit going on now. It's beautiful. For incoming. Multiple things about that. I am honored that I was one of the first people you thought of when you realized that you had a podcast involving. Of course, buddy. Uh, Mary, I, 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 I just thought I just tried to think of a waste of life, and I thought of you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, who's wasting their life away? And smokes a lot. Of, oh, that's my buddy Matt. That's why I got you, Matt. Sitting in his room all day, smoking doobies, watching Criterion movies. This pretentious <laughs> shit. Hey, man. This pretentious <laughs> bastard. I got the RoboCop Criterion DVD that I paid forty dollars for in two thousand one, and I will never get. Never let that go. I'm not going. Oh, to I'll never let that go. Yep, I, I was so pissed that I paid forty dollars for it way back then, but I'm so glad I did now because well, I'm the only person now, in my it's group been, I know that it's, has it. I mean, it's been out of print for what, like twenty years now? Oh yeah, it went out of print like a year after they released it. If that that those criterions go quick, man, they go fucking quick. Yeah, that's. I would like to rename this episode. Um, Two man buns, one pimpinella. That's what I wanted well, to do. I don't have it anymore. I had to cut my hair off so I can find it. You don't have it anymore? Oh, oh shit. Yeah, no, I still you have... know I cut it off like four months ago. I you told you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right now. He wanted to rub salt in the wound. He knew what the he knew that the man bun means something to guys like us. He's like Jackie Chan in Shanghai Noon when they cut his hair off and he's like, you can never return back. Until your hair grows. And Matt, I'll say the same thing to you that I say to everybody else. I miss having the man bun, but I do not miss managing long hair at all. But I miss having the bun itself. It's if it was the hair, I'd you be good. Take care. You gotta start buying good shampoos, good conditioners. Oh, I know, dude. Expensive shit, dude. I I it like, all the now. It's just me and a bunch of suburban white women. That's oh, it. Oh, dude. It, you gotta get the high-end shampoo and conditioner and the leave-in conditioner and the dry shampoo and the dry What's conditioner. Play around with oil? I'm unironically buying oils off of off of off of uh, white women. You know yeah, what I mean? It, this is ridiculous. And, and I'm you gotta, what else? It was works. It was. Uh, the oh yeah, you gotta buy expensive brushes that brush it a certain way. I got my fucking high end hair ties. Like it, it was a whole thing to manage, dude. It's something Jesse would never understand. It's something yeah, I do. I don't want to understand it. I, I don't. I don't want to understand. I. Look at me right now. It doesn't look like I can manage my life, let alone my fucking hair. So, I mean... Um, you know, what? maybe you need a man bun. I'll tell you. I, you, you, know, need you, know, stuff for me. you need it. You need to go through that. Wait. Wait. What if having a man bun is like what when a parent tells a kid you can have a dog so you can learn responsibility? Yeah, absolutely. The man bun is the equivalent of the first dog. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that's it'll be easy because both of them starved to death. Let's go. 
Oh Boom, here we go. That awful it's jokes. All right. It's, we're cooking. Now we're cooking. We had to get an awful joke out of the way. But anyways, speaking right, of awful let's jokes, go. let's go. Let's just do this. All right. So today we're really talking about 420, man. It is <clears throat> Halloween. We always talk about having our marathons for our Halloween movies. Holidays like Christmas, we have our marathons. But 420, man, with Ohio saying yes. We need to have a fucking official marathon. We need to set it forth. I'm talking like ABC's 25 Days of Christmas, but but instead it's weed. And they just play weed movies back to back. But that brings in the important question. What movies would be in that marathon? That is the question we are here to answer today. So uh, without further ado, uh, there is a ton of movies, ton of movies that have uh, pretty much promoted the culture of uh, marijuana and uh, has brought in a lot of comedies. There's some dramas and like that. But I'm going to start with our guest today. Matt, if you had to watch a good pot film, what would be, what do you think kicks Ooh. off that ABC family's 420 days until 420? I am, if you are asking me to pick one, what am I bringing to the table for stoner movies? I'm bringing grandma's. Yeah. I'm bringing grandma's. Fucking Fucking grandma's boys. So many movies we're going to sit here and talk about. I have been loved with with weed movies or weed <laughs> adjacent movies, and even movies that you got to watch when you're fucking blazed. But grandma's boy to me is the absolute fucking pinnacle of this shit. Why is it the pinnacle? Why is it the pinnacle? Because that's not a now. I love that movie, but that's not a movie that's ever brought to the forefront like you just brought it. So why is that movie brought to the forefront as a pothead movie? This is obviously quotable, right? One of the most quotable yes. movies everywhere. Every Very much. Quotable yeah. shit. This has... It's somehow the most grounded in reality stoner movie. Yes, yes. Create, and this Very is much, the yes. One to it as it. Like, every great stoner con, like, it, it gets so fantastical and so ridiculous. So obviously, like, the Harold and Kumar movies are ridiculous. Half-Baked got ridiculous. Pine Pineapple Express is a like very close second for me, but I'm even yeah. saying that's falling out of it because again, it literally ends in a gunfight. Right, like, right, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> it turns into a fucking action movie. And Seth Rogen yeah. doing fucking uh, he's doing Taekwondo and shit. Like, remember whoa, when he jumps like, on Gary Cole at the end? From, oh like, my god, that was a great up, scene. He, like jumps like he's this. Look, on, like, oh, he's shit. literally like he fucking has hang time. And yeah, dude. He he's like on like it. Sailing like, it was John. Like it's like a, some fucking John Woo shit. Yes. It's really yes. fun. Like don't get me wrong. Really fun. But I am bringing Grandma's Boy as my example of like the best fucking stoner movie because it has all of these things. It's quotable. It's got past stars plus future stars. Yeah. Um, and it to me is one of the more grounded ones. Like every. It's crazy it's that plausible. It's very crazy how grounded it is, and also it's kind of one of the first instances where we kind of see these stoners actually be quite responsible i mean yeah. yes they're 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 nine to five their nine to five job is fantastical let's admit it it, it is Being it's a very fantastical it's job but it's like he's like, it's like alan cover he's developing his own video game for christ's sakes we have their video game they're just coders coders are the biggest stoners you'll ever fucking meet in your entire life I know, but it's like, but like, this is like the more responsible side of, of being a stoner. I think one of the interesting things about pot films is that they celebrate irresponsibility yeah. of the stoners. But this movie is kind of interesting. It's they're, they're, they're well put together. They're in a corporate office. You know, they have a, they have a corporate culture that one guy keeps calling out people to play video games against him. Nick Schwartz and beats the shit out of him at DDR. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like there's a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just it's just a very it's just I don't know. I find that to be such an interesting element. I never thought of Grandma of a boy like that. So Bravo, that is a good kickoff film. Yeah, so for me, um, because I unfortunately I didn't see it in the theater, but I rented it like within that first week that it came out. And believe it or not, Blockbuster was still around at that time. So you better believe that was a pick off the Blockbuster shelf when I rented it. But what really um, 
got me with it is that it to me it was normalcy okay so i was born in 81 i was a kid during the reagan eras and the whole just say no and the huge drug campaign thing and i grew up thinking that marijuana was just as horrible as crack cocaine okay and yep. then, like the 90s came and like people started to pull their head out of their ass and they're like wait a minute maybe we've all just fallen for this stupid bullshit and so like as i've gotten older now half the country's legal ohio legalized it last week that we've had medical for years people with various conditions can now have access to the medicine to help them um it, it's 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 great but it's something i never thought was going to happen and back when grandma's boy came out it was still a pipe dream for ohio and the thing that i connected the most to grandma's boy was obviously just the the characters that they're that centered around video games they do video game testing they go on these adventures together um and it was about a 38 year old single man working in a young kid's area profession and was also yep. a pothead that was able to balance a corporate full-time job taking care of his grandmother being with his friends and just fucking chilling out at the rest of the night. It didn't demonize pot smoking. It didn't make no. pot smoking into a punchline. It normalized it for old people. It's like, hey, you can drink, but if you want to chill and smoke, who the fuck cares? Because that's fun too. And I, I think that that helped with, we're talking about how grounded it was. And that was it for me. That really hit the grounding for me. It was just like, Everything in this movie seems normal, minus the fantastical job part. But everything else oh, is yeah. normal. And I liked that because that was even – even like we brought up Half-Baked. There's so many fantastical things that happened in that movie. It's not oh, yeah. But Grandma's Boy does feel a sense of normalcy. And that, on top of the games, on top of the actors, on top of the fucking characters – you know, what are you doing, Jacob? Just thinking about my game. Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, it's just, it's so it's be revolutionary. Good, it's so good. So, yeah, it's definitely on top of this. About to be. No, it's like the most fantastical thing about that movie is when it fucking hard cuts to the news and there's Dante with a with a fucking lion in the in the yeah. tree because Dante bought a fucking lion off of yeah. Doctor Shango and like that's, that's the man. most fantastical thing. But it's like that's something that like can happen. Like that gets yeah. The, the <clears throat> the throat> throat> would do that. <laughs> look, look. If Joe Exotic could buy a bunch of lions, I am sure Dante can get a lion. That's there you go. Oh, absolutely. and Joe and Joe Exotic was do was on meth. All right, he was on biker crank. All right, and so marijuana uh, is a layup for him. So he got I'm gonna piggyback off of John's like so this normalizing something because it actually just now got me thinking about even the Dante character. Like the drug, it didn't even demonize the drug dealer. No. He was just this goofy fucking dude, yep. like just sort of doing his own thing. He just yep. kind of happened to be a drug dealer. Yep. Absolutely. Mm. And people wanted to be around him and hang out. It, like they talk about that in, in Pineapple Express, which we might bring up. I don't know. But oh, they talk about yeah. how it's uncomfortable, you know, buying drugs and going to a dealer and this and that. But in Grandma's Boy, they're all friends and they all just fucking chill. And when he moves in, that's the realism. Right. He goes to Dante's. He chills all night there. And then Dante gives him the free cable box. Like, there it is, man. Then this shit has been in my vocabulary since practically the beginning, especially when I started smoking weed in high school. Um, when he fucking comes in and he says, all right, then we're going to go to the loony bin together, bro. Oh, we'll yeah. fucking go to the loony bin again. Like, I don't know. You just, you want to be around that kind of person. Yeah. Like, that's a beautiful kind of human. He gets the camera out to document it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I just think, like I said, it, it, w me growing up in a, uh, I was in Catholic school in my life. They always made it sound like marijuana was something you had to go in between a building. Some yeah. seedy low life is there. You know, he gives it to you. You're lucky he doesn't fucking shoot you in the stomach and fucking take your money. And it's not that. It, it's it's not that at all. And uh, uh, real quick, I want to bring up a few comments real quick. Uh, Tom Cook, he says, happy 420. There you go. 
Uh, there he is, some A plus uh, right there. It's, it's a, he found this movie to be an inspiring plot movie. Uh, and then also, what's round on the outside and high in the middle? Which, by the way, what that needs to be a shirt. All right, that needs to be a shirt. And then uh, my wife, she said, bring up reefer madness. Oh God. Oh, oh that, God. If we talked about the greatest pot movie ever created. Reefer Madness would be. Um, I guess that's the anti. That's that's yeah, the bizarre. Awesome. That's, that's gonna be. But that, uh, I think what's so great about that movie, though, is how movie, how yeah. opposite yeah. of what it did. It didn't work. Right, right. It yeah, backfired yeah, right. so hard. The kids were just murdering each other. <laughs> I know. I know. They were smoking drugs and they were committing communist murder. Like that's all it was. They were like, "Oh my god, this marijuana." River madness. Because I'm a communist now. I'm we're a communist. A <laughs> Reefer madness is like the miracle of Thirty Fourth Street for four twenty. Yep. Yep. Agreed. <laughs> It's it, like not a lot of people seen it, but when they talk about it, it's a classic. <laughs> I was just typing in some. I was just typing in some stuff to see what kind of hits I could get back, um, and I just typed in "Why is Reefer Madness so good?" And uh, this article from the Cora literally says, "Do U.S. citizens still treat the movie Reefer Madness like it's true?" <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Sure yes, not. yes, we do. Absolutely. Yes, we Some fucking do. Might. Some people might. Dude, I, I <laughs> look. I tried. I tried it for the first time ever in my life this year. And you know what? I think Marxism is the way to go. I'm just gonna throw that one out there, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think everything I have, you should have it, and everything you guys have, I should have. I, I don't know why. It's just listen. February seventeenth. I didn't feel like this. February 18th, I always, I suddenly felt like this. He, so, he met, met. Jesse tried the pot and look what it did. It fucked with his brain. Yeah, look at him. And now he's gonna, he's, before we know it, he's going to be leading a Leninist revolution. Yeah, he's going to start kind of a basic basic principle. Hard R, Listen, you know, what do you name it? He's going to do it. Like, because he's smart. This is it. Jesse's declining. This is it. It's over and for me. Well, I will. Your life. Well, I think you'll be proud of me uh, because you two both inspired me, okay? So let me explain what set me up, okay? Let me explain what set me up, okay? Is so a compliment or an insult? I have no idea. It's take it however the hell you want, okay? So here's what happened. I get done doing two shows, all right? My last show I did, uh, it, was, um, it was for a charity benefit. And I dress like a crazy little character and run around. It was kind of, anyways, my knees were hurting, everything. As soon as my knees started hurting, I just thought of John. And I was like, John would take gummies right about now. John would take gummies. All right. And then I thought, I thought, and I thought to myself, Matt would want me to take the gummies. Matt would want me to. And the night before, I did a comedy show where we were paid, but then they were like, there's a goodie bag for you guys at the end of the night. Take one home. And it just had a bunch of interesting surprises I didn't know were in there. And I'm like, holy shit. All right. So there was a gummy in there. And I was like, all right, well, let me uh, let me try it. Let me see what this does. So I've never had any of this ever in my life. Never. And I misread the cutting instructions for like how, like what portions what? represent on, on. Yeah, because the whole thing was like 100 milligrams. Man up. What okay. the hell? No, 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 fuck no, I'm gonna do that. No, so I know. took oh, it, so high, bro. dude. I took a slither and I took 10 milligrams of my first shot. Um, okay, I didn't know that. And it, and at first, the first hour, it wasn't kicking in. So part of me was like, I think years of being a comedian and getting shotgunned all the time has trained me for this. And then all of a sudden, I started giggling like a madman while watching The Purge. And uh, <laughs> nice. I was like, First one, that is telling. telling. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. You watching the first one? No, I was watching the TV show. Oh, okay. TV shows are good. If anybody wants to know, the first TV shows are good. What okay. was it that made you laugh? What did yeah, you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? Who what did you, you see and that you just started busting? Because yeah. this, 
This is an important okay. owner for stoner history. This is an important thing to remember. Okay, so I gotta tell you. That, so it's an eight-hour season. Okay, it's the last episode of the show. Okay, so you need to know this whole entire season doesn't take place during the purge. It begins in the last hour of the purge, and then it ends during the next purge. Okay, now here's what happens. So let's just say me and Matt are characters. All right, all right. We both go out during the purge because we're pledging for a fraternity. But I get caught. Matt gets away instantly, okay? Just gets away instantly. And he comes back to the front. He's like, oh, Jesse's been gone. Jesse's gone. But then I somehow come back, and I have blood all over me. And, I'm, and I start turning into, like, fucking Vincent D'Onofrio in full metal jacket for the remainder of the year, talking about how I want to hurt everybody and stuff like that. I become a straight-up incel for the whole year. And like I'm re getting myself ready for the next purge. I keep saying shit to Matt, but Matt is like regretful. Matt is like, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. I should never left you there. And Matt is doing his best to be a better friend. He's doing his best to be a better friend. Cause he remembers that night where I got caught and he was like, sorry. And then ran away. Right? And I didn't thought I was going to die. So finally the next purge comes. It doesn't work. I'm fucking Vincent D'Onofrio. I'm starting to get everybody in the, the pledge house. And then finally, I have everyone tied up. Matt comes into the room, and I go, it's time. It's time. Now, keep in mind, Matt, the whole entire show has been like, like I'm going to save him. I'm going to be better. 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 But in, the, but in the final moment, where it was that time to nut up or shut up, he, it, it, the guys, Matt's friends are all tied up, ready to get killed. Not, and, I, and I got the knife. Matt's character goes, Sorry, he <laughs> gets right out of the pledge, and then everybody just gets fucking murdered. So, like, they built up this guy to have an arc, and then he never had the arc. He never changed. He abandoned his friends for a second time, and this time got more of them killed. But they built it up like madness. What sounds like reefer madness? It was. It was. So I started laughing hysterically. Sarah got scared. She called Ty Moore. Ty Moore, she's like, I'm really worried about him. He's laughing way too fucking much. Uh, it's okay. And then for some reason, my wife's like, you should get go get the cake because it was my, around my birthday time. Uh, I found out, I don't know how to cut a cake when I'm high. Uh, so I started stabbing it. And then I was trying to put it on a plate. So I, I rolled the cake into a meatball. And I put it on Sarah's plate and gave it to her. And then I gave my little meatball cake and I ate that too. And then we watched the rest of the purge and that was my night. That, that was a crazy story, dude. Um, wow. We, we definitely need to unpack it. Uh, but we're, I think we should talk about some more shows. It's, it's one of, it's probably one of the better examples of proving reefer madness genuinely correct. That yeah. the moment, yes. was, wait a minute, because the, mo the moment you got on, you started stabbing a cake. Did I hear the cake correctly? Oh, I started stabbing the shit out of the cake. Because I couldn't figure out how to cut a cake, and I got mad, so I started stabbing it. Like fucking Norman Bates through the shower, just started stabbing the cake. Oh, my God. He, um, you turned into, Re you turned into a Reefer Madness character. Yeah. It's, I know, I know. It's kind of beautiful. Should we vote for Bernie this this election season? Just want to throw that out there. I don't know why I want to throw that out there. I think we need to vote for Bernie. Uh, I'm excited yeah. that we converted you. I'm proud that we converted you. Proud that me and John converted I, I, to the good side. I don't, the side of the marijuana. To the, the yes. Marijuana. I am going tonight. I'm going to have more de devil's lettuce, and I'm going to read uh, some more Lenin. That's what I'm going to be doing tonight. So, all right, get that Marxism in me. Oh my God. Anyways, let's talk more movies. Sorry, it just reminded me of Big Lebowski. <laughs> hey, we can move forward. Big Lebowski so is a great... Yeah. There's, we're talking about stoner movies, right? So classical stoner movies. Yeah. You know, these movies where they're literally about dudes smoking weed. Um, Big Lebowski, that's one of those movies where, like, you just kind of got to watch Rip. You just got to kind of watch it blaze out of your mind. It's like the perfect fucking stoner movie. It has everything. Yeah. I think what's so great about Big Lebowski 
is that they purposely build towards something and then they purposely don't do it. And they or just it, keep or it's not as like epic as you think it's gonna be. It's, or not... it's fucked up, you know, and you're just like, really? Again? Like, but then you're like, oh my god, like, in a move if it was any other movie, the moment that Walter picks up the Lebowski, he should have been walking. All right. Let's put like, if it was any other movie, the the real Lebowski walks, okay. He would have picked him up, yeah. he would have walked, and they'd be like, how dare you? The fact that that motherfucker fell and went yeah. flat, it, it just built to this anticlimactic, awkward as fuck moment where Walter goes, oh man, sorry. <laughs> but think about it, Jeff. Even think about it. So that's that's the whole point. And, and like to your actual point that you just made, the entire movie is about doing that. They build you up on a character so that you know and understand who that character is. And then they put that character in a scenario which they have to choose something, and you are convinced that that character you know is going to go a certain way, and they go the opposite way every fucking time. It every fucking time should have been a fake. He absolutely should have, and he should have gotten called out. But do you think it was more impactful for the movie to find out that the one truth Mr. Lebowski had was that he was injured and that Walter was simply being Walter, doing things that Walter does and never learns from. That was the bigger impact than Lebowski. That's made. the bigger impact. Because you're, that, like, you're what, are, what are you doing now? <laughs> like, what is happening here, right? So, Dude, so, I wish I had the confidence of Walter. Like, the confidence is... Dude, yeah, he, like I, I, his, I call his philosophy. Fuck it, let's go bowling. All right, like they pretty much set, they did a hostage trade, and for all they know, they probably got the girl killed. And his first response is, "Fuck it, let's go bowling." <laughs> that poor woman. They're amateurs, dude. They're amateurs. And I'm the fucking them. amateurs. <laughs> I do. Even in the face of danger, he just doesn't give a shit. I like the one part. No, Donnie, they're nihilists. They're cowards. <laughs> the greatest thing, too, is that, like, Walter doesn't smoke. Donnie doesn't smoke. Lister Lebowski doesn't smoke. The nihilists don't. Nobody smokes but the dude. And the dude, the dude. is always prepping because the dude is always at homeostasis chill. And so he has to prep anywhere he goes. And if you actually watch some interviews, there's a great interview with uh, Jeff Bridges about – him doing this movie and that every scene he was in, he's like, wait a minute, what was the dude doing before this scene? And he talks about when he goes to visit Mr. Lebowski with the ransom note where he hires him to do the handoff. He's like, when they got on set and they're getting ready to film, he's like, hold on. He's like, wouldn't the dude have smoked a joint on the way here? And they're like, yeah, yep. he's like, hold on a second. And he like roughs up his eyes and then he's ready to go. And that's what's so great about it is the dude is the only one who smokes and he's the chillest guy. His car gets stolen and he just walks home. Like he that, walks home. Like, he's the chillest. You're like Walter is amped up at like a level. The only thing he gets passionate about is he hates the eagle. He just and he hates the, the fucking eagle. The only thing that he got heated about, he got thrown out of a cat. He goes, "Get the fuck out of my cat!" I dude. love that dude. He's like, "Get the fuck out!" He's like, "I like the eagles. Get out of here." I yeah. love like I love how zero to sixty that cab driver went. Like, yeah, he just wasn't get the fuck around, out. Man. I know. Did I, I say one more word? <laughs> did 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 the dude ever like have a full roach, like a full joint? Like he always, every time they show him smoking, oh, it's always the tiniest little thing. It's a tight. But they always have a smoke too. That's also the joke too. Is that he's always smoking roaches. He's trying to pull this out. He's drinking his white Russian. But there is the scene when he goes to Mister Lebowski's to get the ransom note and he's like hey do you mind if i do a j pulls one from his hat and he has a full oh, joint oh like, yeah but that's the Wait, only time you see him on a full joint it's roaches the rest of the movie he never roaches liked the rest. right what's that matt yeah he, he never likes that joint though right 
Um, he, you don't see him light it, just like you never see the dude actually bowl in the entire movie. Not one time do you see the dude physically throw the ball down the lane, and nope. he, it is not shown in the or entire movie. or Walter or Walter Walter. Yeah. They don't show that yep. either. Just uh, the Nile. The Nile. That's it. What oh, a and weird Liam. I think you get a shot of Liam bowling. What a weird, weird use of implication. Yeah. Well, the whole thing is that the movie is literally about people. The movie is literally about people not being who they are. Like the dude is not the real Lebowski. All right. right. The the they bowl, but they never bowl. The nihilists aren't nihilists because they're violent. You know, it's like everybody is someone that's not someone. Even to the point where Donnie wears a bunch of shirts with people's names on it, and it's never Donnie. Right. <laughs> It, it's never Donnie's name. It's Life never. People discredit it, man, but they don't get it. It's it. I'll tell you what. I I will say the first time I watched it, I didn't get it. I will be honest. I was Did I watch movie. it the second time? And I thought it was yeah. one of the best comedies yeah. to ever been read. And I think that's a lot of times with the Coen Brothers because, like, even uh, Burn After Reading, I didn't think much of that movie the first time I watched it. Now when I watch it, I revere it as one of the funniest comedies I've ever seen in my life because it is just it has that same moronic element that the, the Big Lebowski has where it's a bunch of people making mountains out of molehills when there barely is a molehill and it's just ridiculous yeah, yeah but, it, 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 it truly is um, so I want to talk about another uh, great 420 movie, but before we do, since we got on a little Lebowski uh, tangent, no pun intended, um, everybody who loves this movie constantly has a different favorite scene at that time. So Jesse, if I were to ask you right now, what's your favorite scene? What are you answering today? Oh, Lebowski. Um, yeah. uh, oh, uh, this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. <laughs> Every time. Every... You, see what happened, Larry? you see what happens? You see what happens? All right, Matt, All right. Yours. right now, today, what's your favorite scene? Um they're in the uh big Lebowski the the dude is looking for Lebowski's wife, goes to the porn guy's house. <laughs> yeah, ben Gazzara, I think it's played by Ben Gazzara. Yep. And he fucking draw. He thinks he's being a fucking investigator. Yeah. Becky Gar and writing something down. The dude walks over yep. and does the fucking old detective trick. Yeah. And it's just a cow who's the dude with a big boner. Like and that's all it is. And then he's roofied and gone. You yep. go into the next scene like that shit. I think about that sometimes. Like, I want a shit. whole spinoff series about Jackie Treehorn in his life. I really do. Because dude, that dude's been into some shady shit, man. You know he has. Dude, yeah, he, that dude, so that's the dude from uh, him and Cassavetes did a whole bunch of movies together. It's Killing of a Chinese Bookie. Like, highly recommend that fucking movie cool. that he stars in. Fucking wild. All right, well, before we jump, I would say mine right now is when they go to the dude's landlord's show uh, so that the dude can give him notes. Um, and that gets interrupted by Walter, which the dude convinced Donnie to go with him. Why the fuck would Donnie go see this show? But the dude convinced Donnie to go, and then Walter shows up, and he just starts talking about the plan with Larry and how they're going to shake him down, and then it distracts the dude from giving his landlord his notes. And I always wonder what would have happened if the dude was able to complete the notes and give them to Monty and Monty could improve. And we saw the improved performance and he had a bigger audience. Like, where's that at? We'll never know. We'll, we'll, we'll never know, man. It, it, that, but that's what, that's one of the funny things about that, like how that movie has so many small working parts. Absolutely. And when you think about, you can think about one instance, here's how great this movie is. Okay. I was at pins the one time and I was doing uh, duck bowling. Right. Here is how amazing this movie is. I I rolled, got a strike, and I screamed, and no one fucks with the Jesus. Nice. And then somebody on the other side of the thing went, Woo! like the way John Turo would touch <laughs> when he like moves pelvis in and out. Yeah, like he did the exact same thing, and it was the funniest nice. fucking thing ever. I was like, that's how great that movie is. Like. 
you can yell a line and then somebody will do something to let you know, buddy, I know what you're talking about. Absolutely. And that was, uh, is that the mark of a great movie? Where it becomes like a shared language among among yeah. a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I feel like that has to be the mark of just a great movie in general. I agree. My wife, whenever I start annoying her, she'll just turn around and go, "Shut the fuck up, Johnny." Yep. <laughs> like that's the first thing she says that fucking yeah, kills me every single time. I can absolutely see Sarah yelling. You're out of <laughs> it. But then no, I did go to the In and Out Burger after. Yeah. Just the world doesn't go to the In and Out Burger after. <laughs> the world doesn't stop and turn for you, Donnie. You worthless piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so Don, Walter is so mean to Donnie, dude. I mean, I just, I, anytime I go to a bowling alley, as soon as I hear the pins clonk, I just go Lebowski. I, the, it is the best. It's 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 just such a good movie, and that's why. And this movie, what's so great about it is this movie makes the Lebowski uh, a lifestyle. Like, you know, yes. like the dude abides. Yeah, you know I mean, like that's. Yep. And yeah. now he's all like Sam Elliott. And, you know, like doing his yeah. meditations and mm -hmm. you know, listening to whale songs in the tub, smoking a roach. Like. <laughs> He was just, he's just raised later, like when they fucked him up, and he's just listening to bowling sounds. On yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Just hearing strikes was, and smile on his face. <laughs> apparently, like that was like some sort of bowling championship of yeah. one of his favorite bowlers, and he's like right. listening to it. Yeah, right. He listens to bowling. The dude listens to bowling. <laughs> Dude, I I could not stop laughing. I thought it was so funny, but but yeah, no, that is definitely an, an epic an epic stoner movie. Now I know we're running a little low on time. Uh, what other stoner movies out there do you think uh, would fit? I mean, obviously, let's before we go any further. There is a ton. There is a ton. Well, whatever but, we do, yeah, we'll just start listing them off so people can put their fucking. Say the one it. everybody's waiting for you to say. Half baked? Is there that the go. one? That's the number there one. There you go. Like, I mean, that's so. I think that's number one. Anytime somebody says stoner comedy, pothead movie, you know, whatever, I, I think for most people, it's half baked is the one that comes fresh to mind. It came out at the right time in the 90s, had a great cast of comedians. It still holds up today because, other than a few little details, it's kind of timeless. So, I mean, it's it still holds up and that's what everyone thinks, man. It's Samson and Mr. Nice guy, dude. I think one of the, one of the funniest things about that movie, and it's not talked about enough is how hard he is a cop killer in that, in that, in that, like the newspaper, it doesn't give no, like when I was watching the news, like when they showed like the news reports and the newspaper clippings and all that stuff, there's never a mention that it's a horse. Ever, right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I just and that made me laugh even harder because it's like they are totally and the fact that the whole court case takes place in one night yeah. in the same yeah. night of the arrest, yeah. like he's tried, he's yeah. convicted, yeah. he's pretty much in jail. <laughs> oh, don't forget the fact that the horse had a had, was a diabetic, so it literally diabetic. had a medical condition. Um, that could have caused that to happen a multitude of different ways, and that's not mentioned at all. To your point of not even mentioning no, it before, no. like, but that's that's where it's at, man. Because he has to go to jail and he has to sober up because he has to be sober, Harlan Williams, so he can deal with Nasty Nate, dude. And that's why the yeah. Squirrel Master had to come out of left field, and it was Tommy Chung, dude, because he had to save the sober Harlan Williams. It is so fucking poetic. Dude, I could hard. not believe that was Tommy Chong. Like, at first, I was like, the, like, because he wasn't playing it like Tommy Chong. You know what I mean? Like, he, he was, there was a bit of like, I don't know what, what it is, but he kind of had a seriousness to him, but like a zen. Not yeah. like how he is when he's in Chong. So at first, I didn't recognize him at first, just based on how he's sewn. And then I was like, holy shit, that's, that's fucking Chong. I was like, and I was looking for him the whole movie. But also, I forget, like, damn, he, I mean, the, I forgot how young he, well, how young he did look in the 2000s. Cause he's, or the early 90s. 
Because he still looked pretty good. The funniest thing you know, about the has been smoking master. weed for fucking 40 years. We doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, he's just, got great genes. But the, 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 no, the no I'm not saying that. What? I'll say, I'm not saying that, like, Let's say that weed does anything to your body. I'm just saying well, the dude's old. Good. Me, I weed mean, makes you look like they should smoke more weed. You look like Tommy Chalk. You'll get fucking, you know, you'll look the same. You'll be the squirrel master, dude. Yeah, yeah. But I do love that they they have to have they have to have a protagonist and an antagonist in jail. And so what better to have Nasty Nate and the Squirrel Master? You can tell that these guys have had beef over the years in prison. Squirrel Master is well-respected. Nate's well-respected. And any time the Squirrel Master has to jump in and help defend Kenny, he's always like, all right, Nate, what did I tell you? Like, they're always bringing shit up. Like, they've had this, like, decades-long beef and, like, all this history. And so he's just, like, always putting Nasty Nate in check, man. And that's the funniest shit because Nasty Nate's a huge dude, and he's probably taking people out left and right. And here you have 120 pound squirrel master just putting him in his fucking place left and right, dude. That shit, you can't write better than that, man. That's that's probably always been one of my favorite parts of the film. Cause like even when I saw it for the first time, I thought that all the prison stuff was just absolutely hilarious. Such good writing. I think one of the, the more interesting things about the movie is how it how it like its relationship to reality and, and marijuana. Yeah. You know, like the scene when they start floating, like I thought that was brilliant. Cause I was like, I was like, Oh, it's this, it's this type of movie. They're floating. Guys feel like we're floating. You want to go outside? Like, <laughs> and then Remember Stephen the Wright just starts up? levitating. I was like, this is too funny. And then at one point they're like, wait, how do you, when they're in the nightclub, they're like, wait, how do you know that they're getting high? And then you look back and there's people in the nightclub floating. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, I'm in love with Mary Jane. And they're all like floating and shit. Yeah. But, oh my God. No, that high, high bait. I mean, half baked. I feel like that's kind of like the Christmas story movie for. I mean Four and points. it's got like a it has a, a totality story. You've got Thurgood and all of his friends, and they live in New York. They rely on each other. They work hard to have their shitty apartment, and they like to relax and get high at night and on the weekends. But at some point, like with anything in these various stages of life, you gotta kind of move on from something. And then it became about his journey to move on and be like, okay, I found a good girl. Maybe we're going to go over here and try this for a little bit. So I felt like it was a completed story too. Like, he went Oh yeah. Yeah. Guy and he became this guy and he got into a ton of funny shit along the way that will be talked about for the history of people. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, overall this movie, I just felt like, yeah, it did. It had a kind of finality to it all. Like, and I know they always talk about giving this movie a sequel, but part of me is just like, don't, no, 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 don't, no, no, just no, let no, it go. No, no. I miss, I miss one-off movies. Yeah, absolutely. I miss them because there's something special about them, and and there's something just so complete in the fact that it's one of its own kind. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I like I said, we talked about this on the show. If you're ever gonna do a sequel for a movie. The sequel, I mean, it has to stand on its own. It has to be its own movie. And I say that like to the degree of look how the Dark Knight is its own movie. You don't ha you don't feel the urge to have to watch Batman Begins oh, yeah. before you watch the Dark Knight. I mean, you could just look, throw on the Dark Knight and that's the end of the story. How many sequels you know? that have worked, not Naked Gun? What other ones have worked? Uh, Alien. Uh, for, for sequels? Yeah. Alien. Um, I know some people disagree with me, and I'm okay with it. Anchorman 2, I thought it was just completely balls to the wall, goofy as fuck. It wasn't as quotable as the first movie, but I laughed pretty fucking hard. Can I help you, guy? What? Can there, I help yeah. you? There, no, I, no, no, no. Involving a shark and shit. <laughs> I, the one scene where Harrison Ford's like listing off all his accolades with him <laughs> in the office, he goes, I killed two men in Okinawa, World <laughs> War II. Last week, <laughs> oh, I forgot dude. Have you that. ever seen the alternative lines to that movie? Like oh. the alternative lines Harrison Ford had. 
I didn't know that they had. Are yeah. they on? Are they on like a DVD or something? Yeah, like there's one where he's like, you see that pillar over there? I hid behind that for three hours. <laughs> Eventually, a maid came and I jumped out and was ah, and she fell backwards out the window. <laughs> and if and to this day, I don't think it was my oh. fault. <laughs> oh my god, man, I'm crying. That's hilarious. I'm gonna have to look those up. Like I'm just like, holy shit! Wow. Like any one of these could have made the movie. But yeah, that's a good anyways, for Anchorman too. What? That's a good argument for Anchorman too. I mean, it is. Look, there's some problems with Anchorman too. The whole divorce dad thing was kind of dumb, um, you know, and a few other things. But dude, it's it's all anyway. It's all about Jack Lime. Once you realize it, that Anchorman 2 is about the rise and fall of Jack Lime, it will just completely change your perception of that film. There you go. That that's it. Well, hey, right now that is all the time we have. Let's just oh. let's see if we can each name three movies real quickly that would go great with 420, just so we can add more to the list and we'll sign off. For me, um, like I said, I want to add uh, Pineapple Express just because it came out in 2008 when it was like the heyday of fucking comedies in general. Yeah, so man. I got to throw I got to throw some love there. Great. Up in Smokes, Cheech and Chong. I love that movie. Uh, that definitely had to get its uh, its praise, and I know I'm missing a lot of movies. I know I'm fucking missing a lot of movies. Um, then I'm gonna have to say that literally the beginning of fucking uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboots, where they have their own weed store, and it's <laughs> called uh, <laughs> the Cock Smokers. The Cock Smokers, man. The Cock Smokers. I yeah. So I got I got to give it to my. I have to give it to those three. John, what are three movies you got to add to the list? Well, I mean, I'll stay with the Cheech and Chong motif, but I'll go with next movie because that's my second favorite. Show. I love next movie. I absolutely love next movie. I think it's hilarious. the The whole opening scene where they're siphoning gas is one of the funniest things I think that's ever been filmed in Hollywood. It's just the way they deliver the lines and like how it looks completely real in the like the late seventies when that was a whole thing. I just that's definitely one of mine. There's a lot of weed smoking that goes on. He smokes a live roach instead of a a weed roach. Um, it's just it, next movie. It's not the best, and I, I know it's probably low on some people's list, but it's number two for me. Next, it's up. a fun movie. What was this from? Is from the seventies? What is a seventy stoner movie? Oh yeah, yeah, you know. I never thought this. I'm putting it on my list right now. Them. Um, so so next movie would definitely be one. Uh, I don't think Nigel Daniels watching now, but if he was, I would definitely recommend Evil Bong versus Gingerbread Man. Um, okay, that is just uh, that cinematic masterpiece and deserves to be in the Continental Congress vault. Um, and I don't. I mean, I know we talked we talked a lot about the ones that, that I really like that I could watch over and over again, but I do love the Harold and Kumar films as well. I think those are great. Oh yeah. Adventure films, a lot of pot smoking going on in those movies. Um, the, the first Jay and silent Bob film, that's a good one. Although they don't smoke as much in the movie, but they just wreck implied. Everything's implied. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Those are just some other ones I've thrown out on top of what we talked about, but pineapple express, even though there's some ridiculousness to it, um, it, it's just so well produced. It's well acted. It's well written. It's well filmed. And I think that film's still going to hold up. Yeah, James Franco turned out to be a piece of shit. Um, but let's still watch the movie because it's a funny movie, you know? So there we go. That's my two cents. Matt, what are your three? We have to round them off because we're low on right. time and I have to jump out of the car. We're going to do it very, very quickly, but Super Troopers is a big one. Oh, uh, yeah. Super Troopers, yep. It's a big Absolutely. one if you put on there. Um, drug, great, greatest drug movie of all time. You have Fear, Loathing, in Las Vegas by Terry Gilliam. Um, that's and uh, Dazed and Confused. Oh yeah, perfect. Dazed yeah, a hundred percent. It has to be on your one of my list. favorites somewhere. too, man. I love that film. Oh my god, I feel like watching it tonight. What? Actually, now, yeah. Now, if you guys have everything written down, write down all these. Get eyes fucked up until Saturday and watch all these movies. I like it. Just run the gauntlet. 
Well, there you have it. Right now, we have to go. Right now, we have to do a hard stop. I'm, I got a show I got to jump on right now. But anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank everybody who tuned in in the comments section. We love you guys. Matt Onesti, thank you so much for joining us, man. I thank really you, appreciate man. it. And uh, be sure to check out Matt Onesti's uh, Makes You Uncomfortable. Where can we get that, Matt? Matt? Wi-Fi, lost it. It's okay. <laughs> Where can we get your special, Matt? YouTube. You can, uh, YouTube. There it is. YouTube's the king. Check yeah, out his YouTube comedy special. Matt O'Nessie makes you uncomfortable. And until next time, I'm Jesse. I'm John. You've been I'm sitting at the Grumps table. Thank you and have an awesome night, everybody. Take care, everybody. Like and subscribe, okay? Good night.